Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today we find ourselves as part of a popular, heroic, yet dysfunctional family trying to work as a team to defeat villains before they destroy the world. The Umbrella Academy comic books have sold over one million copies and has been adapted to a blockbuster Netflix series. Now it's been adapted to a cooperative game for one to six players, plays in just 20 minutes for ages 12 and up, and published by Studio 71 in partnership with Dark Horse Comics. You'll be attacking villains, using hero-specific powers, and playing story cards. If you're good enough, you'll be able to make it to the final battle to try and win the game. Now it's on Kickstarter right now, so I'm going to show you how the game works, and I'll see you on the other side. This is a Kickstarter preview, so all the art and components you see here are prototype. You're going to want to check the Kickstarter link in the description of this video to see all the final art and components. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to be able to select one of these six heroes, which each of them has their own specific hero-based power they'll be able to use throughout the game. Now, each player is going to get one of these life cards, and they'll place their hero just like this. And over the course of the game, as they lose health or life, it's going to go down like this. And if you ever get to there, essentially you are dead and you are out of the game. Now this is a cooperative game, so you'll still be able to help the players make decisions, you just don't draw or play any cards. Now each player is also going to get five of the hero attack cards that they're going to be able to use throughout the game. Now there are a ton of different villains in this game. Now you'll only be using between five and ten of these depending on your player count, and you'll basically be stacking these up in a stack to play through in your game. The game is played over multiple rounds. Each round, each player is going to be taking turns in clockwise order. At the beginning of the round, you're going to flip over the top of the villain deck. And this is going to tell you how many attack cards that villain's going to have this round. For example, the conductor has six cards. So for example, from the attack deck, we'll put six cards left to right just like this. So for example, we will play six cards from this villain attack deck in a lineup just like this. At the beginning of the round, you'll flip over a dysfunctional family card from that deck, and it will just change some rules for that round. For example, it might be Vanity, where you add a, one extra card to the villain attack card to line up. Or maybe you have sisters fighting and you choose a player to lose a life bar. Or maybe it's brothers fighting and you choose one player to lose two life bars. Things like that. Then starting with the start player going clockwise, each player is going to play a card and they have three options when doing so. The player is always going to play just below the furthest left villain attack card that does not have a card underneath it. For example, they might play this card like this. Now this one has 9 attack, this has 8 attack. Now at the end of the round, if this attack is higher than this, then this will defeat this attack card. However, if it's tied or this is higher, then it will not defeat that attack card. Now keep in mind, even if you're not beating that attack card now, there's still a chance to do it later that I'll show you about. Now the other option, instead of playing the attack uh, card for the attack, you could play it for the heal. And this, uh, essentially you just discard this card and you would heal to life, but you'd leave this space empty and then the next player will play on this spot. For example, if this player played that heal, they would heal too, they would go up just like that. So let's say they did play this for the 9 attack, and that's the next player's turn clockwise, they have to play on this card. Well, instead of playing an attack card by itself, they could play one of the story cards. Now this, when you play one of those, you have two choices. You can use it for the attack, or you can use it for the story, which essentially is an ability, like a family reunion restores a hero to full life. That's great. Or maybe it's, you can use it for 7 attack, or a life boost, give 3 life bars to another player, but you lose a life bar. Or maybe it's a story that's like this, you can use it for the 6 attack, or you could use it for a plus 20 hero boost, add to any attack card, but you lose a life bar. And once we get to the end of this phase, we'll look at whether we've beaten the attack card from the villain. So the 9 beat the 8. Uh, if you defeat it, this essentially goes into a discard pile, and this goes into a separate discard pile. Uh, this one was used for the plus 20 hero boost, and you added the attack card to any attack card. They added it to this. This was a 16, so this beat this. So this has gone like this. This we healed, so this did not get defeated. It's a tie, so this won the tie. This stays there. And the 9 beat the 8, so these will get discarded to their respective piles. And now we're left with this. 
Now players have the option of using their hero powers. So, for example, Space Boy, double the hit on any card. Now, if you use your special power, you must go down one life. To so say, yeah, you know what, let's double this one. This is now a 12, this is a 6. Well, now we've defeated this one and this one's gone. This doesn't actually get played out here. This is just in front of the player, but I wanted to show you what it looked like. And, you know, players can go and, and use their power, uh, but it does cost one life. Maybe this player decides to pick a card from the discard pile and to use it immediately, and maybe they use this one, which was an eight attack, which does this one. Uh, you know, we defeat that one, and this one, of course, it, you know, spent a life to use that power. And let's say this player uses the rumor. I heard a rumor. Tell a villain to die. Boom, this gets used, and this one is just completely gone, and we have defeated all of the attack cards from that villain. However, let's assume that we weren't able to defeat all the cards from the villain. Let's say these two were still left out. You'd add up all the damage these cards do. Two and two, four. Collectively, you have to decide throughout the whole team who is going to be losing a collaboration of those four life points. For example, it's four total damage. You could say, you know what, let's all of us go down one. Although if we did that, this player would die. So maybe, maybe this player took two, this took one, and this took one. You can split it any way you see fit. This is a cooperative game after all. Again, remembering if someone does die, they are removed from the game. They can still help make decisions, but they don't get or play cards. Then that villain will go under the final battle card, just like that, and you'll continue a new round flipping over the next villain. Now let's say you get through all of the villain cards without everyone dying, you get to the final battle. Essentially, all of the villains that you have defeated now will flip over, and they'll get laid out left to right, just like you did in the other rounds, but on the back side of these are the actual villains themselves. And as you can imagine, these have high attack and high damage values. And as normal at the beginning of a round, you would flip over another dysfunctional card, all players lose a life bar for a tender moment, and you would play this round just like you played all the other rounds. If you're able to defeat all these cards, you've won the game. If everyone dies with no life bars, then you've lost. Try again. Now here's some of the other abilities that we haven't yet talked about. Number five does time travel. You move any two attack cards already placed, so you can kind of manipulate what cards go where. Space Boy just allows a double hit on any card. And Vanya, you get to remove four villain attacks, but you deal two damage to a hero. But this is pretty powerful, so after you use it, you flip it over. You can use it once per turn, and then you can flip it over for a turn, and then you get it back. And finally, here are some more of those dysfunctional family cards that I haven't yet showed. Feel free to pause and check these out. Well, there you have the Umbrella Academy. And as I showed in the overview, it's an easy to learn game. And you don't need to be familiar with the Umbrella Academy to play. But those that are will even more appreciate the art, story cards, and hero-specific powers. Now, if you'd like to see all the final art and components and all the different pledge levels available, you can click the link below me in the description of this video, and it will take you directly to the Kickstarter project page. And I'm sure that Studio 71 and Dark Horse Comics would love your support. Yeah.